Hi all, it's AC Dodd here again and welcome to the final part of the honing video series. So now we've got the finer stones in for finishing. I've measured my bore, this is the smallest one so we're going to start here and we're going to size this out. Now I'm just making sure that I'm cutting this as parallel as I can. So I don't want to be making the bore tapered or barrel shaped. So we're just a little bit in the middle I've got to take out just to straighten her up. Now bearing in mind as we do this, we're also putting heat into the block. So the bore is getting bigger, but it's reading bigger, but it's not actually that size. So I'm gonna keep honing, even if it goes a little bit oversized, because when it cools down, it will come back to the normal, nominal size, the actual bore size. So a little bit more in the middle, and a little bit at the bottom. Quite a bit less energy needed for the finer stones. There's not much grip, not so much grip. That's okay. Just something you need to keep an eye on when you're honing larger cylinders, you'll need a lot more power. Cylinder number three done. We move on to cylinder number one. Same principle, and uh, I won't show it on all on the video all the way through. Uh, but I'm going to hone all the rest of the cylinders now. Bearing in mind, I might have to concentrate on certain parts of the bore by making sure I move the honing head into the right position to only take out in the position of the bore that I need in order. Uh, to be able to make the cylinders parallel so there is some skill here and this is one of the skills that you need to learn if you want to hone cylinders it's not easy and you will you will scrap a block or two while you learn Thank you. 
Right, that's the number three. So what sort of sizes do we get? Let's have a look at the clock. Top of the bore. Middle of the bore. Bottom of the bore. As you can see, there's virtually a tenth in it. So it's absolutely possible when hand honing to get extremely tight tolerances. Okay, so we've got a block on the stand. Now one of the things that we need to accomplish after we've done the honing, uh, this is as honed, uh, is as you can see the block is full of grey honing grit and that is absolute death to engines so if you leave that inside an engine uh, after it's been honed then uh, that's not going to run long at all um, and you'll waste your money putting it back together so uh, once the engine's been honed that needs thoroughly cleaning out uh, and that means knocking the oil gallery plugs out and washing that all the way through uh, a couple of times uh, and then probing to make sure you've got it all the way out and it's clean in every orifice okay so uh, what i've done now is i've, I've um, cleaned the block out and then um, washed the bore walls off with brake cleaner and uh, i'll just go down and you can see the finish and see the cross hatch as you can see that's going to be perfect and they're all within a few tenths of being well just a couple of tenths of being parallel round and all the rest of it so uh, yeah really happy with that um, and as I say you can get good results with hand honing if you practice and you take your time it's much quicker to use a proprietary machine and obviously you still need to practice with that machine but you will get quicker results using a machine just like we did with the uh, 9 and 8 pistons, uh, I've already gone through and measured these ones up. This is for the uh, 1380, so 735 mil pistons. We're using these uh, uh, Powermax um, pistons for this build. Uh, and as you can see, we've got a variation a little bit on those pistons. Uh, and it's the same process. So we need to measure each one of those, we'll understand that, and then add a clearance. And in this particular case... Um, we're looking at a 3,000 running clearance is what we're going to go for on this application. The uh, I didn't mention it uh, when I was doing the 9 and 8 block, but uh, the running clearance depends on the piston uh, and the application. So uh, more camshaft, the more RPM you're using, generally we like to just add a little bit of clearance uh, on you know using standard components. When you get more modern engines, uh, they tend to run uh, as tight a clearance as they can get away with because obviously that seals the seals the hole better and keeps the piston square. But in order to do that, you really need coated piston skirts and um, pistons that have uh, a lower coefficient of uh, expansion. These are old school and they don't have that, so they need a good bit of clearance. So uh, for fast road applications, I will aim uh, for the 3000, which has served me well over the years. With that done, then I'll just need to set up the uh, dial ball gauge uh, with the uh, uh, micrometer uh, and therefore we can go ahead and start honing. Okay, so let's take a look at this 1380 before we hone it. Now, some of the challenges of honing, uh, you know, blocks that have had a good overball, and bearing in mind this is plus 113 foul or thereabouts. Now, if we look at a, a sort of a, a normal cylinder like this, you'll see that when that comes through the bottom, there's, uh, it comes through the bottom of the block and then there's clearance to the side. Now, that's important because it allows the honing head to pass through an appropriate amount so we can maintain the correct shape of the bore. If you just put the honing head level with the bottom, it won't actually cut that bore to be the, uh, you know, to be nice and parallel. Uh, it, it'll end up being uh, smaller at this end than it will in the middle, for example. So you have to allow enough room for the honing head to pass through. This is fine here. Unfortunately, when we look at the other side, if I'll just zoom in there, you can see there is no step. And in actual fact, the cylinder wall is basically parallel uh, and, and on the same level as the side of the block casting. So that's gonna be a challenge 
um, but that's not just this block that also goes for other blocks as well so when you're messing around um, boring production blocks out there are variations uh, and this is no no exception and that will prevent the um, or certainly hinder the uh, passing of the honing head through there so we might have a problem on the uh, bore number three getting that nice and parallel all the way to the bottom so uh, we'll just that's something to watch the other thing to remember is although we're looking at the, the bottom of the block here you can see that it's quite thin yeah and we already know that from the previous videos that i, I did on the offset boring video uh, so we've kind of maximized the, the the material between those cylinders the problem we got is because this is overboard so much if you can imagine when we go down into the water jacket there's a variance on the wall thicknesses due to due to production tolerances now that's different between every block now when you bore it out the thickness of that water jacket is much reduced and the problem we get there is is this there has to be a certain amount of pressure that can be applied to the honing stones in order to get um, the honing uh, stones to cut properly uh, if the bore wall is too thin the bore wall will actually move away from the stones under the pressure and they won't actually cut it properly and not only that is when you remove the honing head uh, they'll become um, you know it's like a spring and it kind of springs back so the bore becomes odd shaped and not as round as you want and obviously it becomes smaller in the areas where there's thinner cylinder walls because they push out under the you know they push out under the uh, pressure of the stones so it's very difficult on some blocks to actually achieve a perfectly round bore okay so it's something to bear in mind that just because you want a big bore block doesn't mean to say it's the best way uh, of achieving you know the best seal because your actual bores um, due to the honing process won't necessarily be as round as they would be if they was nice thick cylinder walls etc so that's just something to bear in mind um, it, you know it's not as straight and clear cut as you, as you may think the other thing that can happen is if you've got core shift and it's thin on one side and than, than the other well then potentially you're going to get a good cut on the thick side and a poor cut on the thin side so again you could end up with an odd shaped bore again all these things need to be bearing in mind you know you want a 1380 well on a production block you can roll the dice some blocks come up nice some blocks don't come up as nice as they could be it's just something to uh, consider when you're going for this sort of conversion right okay so um that's the back to the 1380 block now i've finished rough honing uh, and I've got these all within um, five to seven tenths of the uh, final size. Um, so what I'm now going to do is transfer to the um, 280 grit stones and then finish the bores off. Now, one of the things I just wanted to say here is the difference between this block and the 998 block is I had to spend a long time or much longer in the middle of the bore taking out the bores uh, size at that point because where these walls are thin they move out while the honer is going in and the and the middle of the bore is unsupported so actually it cuts less so when you actually hone this um it's actually smaller in the middle than it is at the top and the bottom so you have to spend more time with the stones in the middle uh, dwelling to actually cut that out so there was noticeably more time spent on this block to try and keep those parallel so I need to carry on with that now when I do the final hone. So this time we've changed over to the uh, N27 J65 Delapina stones. So not sooner this time. And then we're going to finish the block. middle honing because we have to remember the middle of the block the middle of the bore moves away because its wall is so thin from the honing head and we check our progress as usual remembering that that of course is going to give us the apparent bore because it's now warm
Yeah. So, a little bit more and we're done. Less at the top. So how did we do? So I've got the block all cleaned off. And if we look at our cylinders, they're all looking lovely. And what about our sizing? So let's have a look at uh, the uh, cylinder bore number three, which is the one that was gonna be close to the bottom of the block. So uh, let's come up and have a look. Top of the bore. Go down to the middle of the bore. Lovely. And right to the bottom of the bore. It's down to the bottom. It's just a couple of tenths. There we go. That's pretty good. I'm very happy with that one. These are very difficult, as I said, when the, uh, the skirt on the bottom there of the block bearing cap is, is uh, overhanging the bore like that because you've got no room for the honing head to go through. So you need to make sure that uh, you try and get those bores as nice as you can all the way down. The other thing to remember is not all the bores are the same size and we have to remember that. So if we look at that, that's about half a thou bigger. Half a thou bigger and all the way at the bottom, half a thou bigger. And the reason for that is because the piston that goes in that hole is bigger than the others, which is why we have to measure the pistons and then we have to hone the block to suit so they all get a roughly the same clearance within a few tenths. That's honing completed on that block. Okay, that brings us to the end of our little honing uh, series there, uh, three parts. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, as ever, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care.